Hi everyone, welcome to 2021. My name is Ryan Sanderson. I'm a CNO, Chief Nutritional Officer here at Bella and Duke, and I am with the sublime Dr. Brendan Clark of the RFVS and the newly launched RPM, Raw Pet Medics. Um, Dr. Brendan Clark and I are going to be covering today why do dogs eat grass? Pet Health and Happiness podcast from Bella and Duke, keeping you at the cutting edge of pet nutrition, behavior, and health with expert interviews, mythbusters, and more to ensure your pet lives a long, happy, healthy life. Dr. Brendan, welcome. Hi, uh, so great to be into 2021 and you know, moving forward. Okay, well, without any further ado, Dr. Brendan, um, a lot of people refer to eating grass as pica. Now, that's something we just need to clear up, isn't it? What's the difference between pica and simply eating grass? Okay, so pica is literally eating things that you wouldn't con see, consider to be normally eating, uh, so normal food. Okay. Uh, so that could be anything from, you'll hear about dogs that will eat soil, will eat... Um, uh, feces uh, will eat, um, you know, wood, uh, you know, carpet, uh, anything uh, along those lines. So it can be led by the brain just thinking um, you're not getting everything you need. And so it gets out there and starts to, you know, eat aberrant stuff. Um, uh, or it's sometimes just behavioral frustration you know many people will think that it's that um, but uh, ultimately that's what pika means is eating things that wouldn't be considered to be food okay fabulous so moving on then uh there's lots and lots and lots of different um methodologies or explanations or theories behind the reasons for dog eating dogs eating grass um what are the top ones, in your opinion? Ultimately, the, the probably the top ones which I've seen considered out there yep. are from um, that it's a way of them effectively purging the system. So they will go out there and actually the, the grass will make them sick, ultimately, by eating excessive amounts, um, through to that it actually reduces nausea. Um, so we know that some of the um, medicines made from cooch grass, for instance, are really good at reducing nausea. Um, so there's a question as to is it because of that, you know, zoo pharmacognosy sense that they're trying to find something to reduce the nausea they're feeling. Then uh, some people will say, well, is it increasing the fiber content? Is it, you know, if the dogs have got worms, does it reduce worms? You know, all of these are talked about as considerations as why they might start eating grass okay so let's just pick up on some of the theories we'll just recap very briefly we've got to help them purge to actually reduce nausea to add in any vitamins or minerals that might be missing from the diet um, and what the others please brandon so um, if they've got a parasite load, so zoopharmacognosy, so things like reducing parasite burdens. Now, for those of you who are going, whoa, that's a big word. Uh, zoopharmacognosy is self-treating according to a sense of smell and intuition. So it, we've covered the reasons. In your experience, do any of these hold water? Um, so out of the, the ones, I would say that the reducing nausea um, seems to be um, one. I've certainly seen the use of the medicines to um, reduce dogs which have recurrent vomiting uh, syndromes. Um, uh, with the, the cooch grass um, uh, treatments, I would say purging definitely, um, you will find dogs will often purge. If you give them anything like that, that's undigestible as far as they're concerned, they have no teeth to grind that grass up. Yeah. So there is really no benefit for the dog on a, uh, a level of being able to get sufficient um, nutrients from the grass to actually 
take out those nutrients that you would otherwise consider to be in there. Um, there is no breakdown of the cellulose. Uh, and often, you know, unfortunately, you dog owners out there will get to see coming out the back end, long stringy bits of grass if they keep it on board all the way through. Um, and that can be very frustrating as your dog's halfway through and, you know, they're, they're hanging together by threads of grass uh, and you're having to um, debulk them for, for the sake of, um, uh, you know, the, looking across the park and seeing a, a dog trying desperately to finish when it can't because the grass is holding it in. So the... Uh Dr. Brendan, thank you for that beautiful image. I will be sure <laughs> after this episode to go and jet wash my mind's eye at the new <laughs> but, that's, <laughs> but that's what, you know, talking to a vet you'll get every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. I'm really pleased you mentioned this. It was something I was about to ask you, is ultimately this whole theory that dogs are actually trying to supplement their diet because there's something missing. I think is a little bit of panic mongering and yes as you say potentially a myth buster because ultimately they don't have the means to break down the cellulose in those grassy stems you know they are ultimately monocots they're not something that dogs are able to digest or able to digest without doing themselves harm purging or calming are potentially the only valuable valid or uh, relevant reasons that I can kind of deduce. Absolutely. Um, and certainly when it comes to plant material. Now, Pika, as a driver for, you know, trying to supplement themselves. Um, so minerals from the earth, you know, even yep. probiotics from the earth yep. are often talked about as, um, you know, causes of them eating that side of things. So you do need to weigh up. You know, I think if you're talking particularly about the eating of the grass, yeah. Then there are limitations uh, for nutrient supplementation. I think it's um, so you just yeah we we're on the right lines to think. I think either purging or calming uh, are probably one of those insightful ways as to as why dogs are eating that that product. Okay. Now this is I mean super interesting. We have discussed in the past, and maybe it's time for us to pick up again at some point. Um, reasons they might eat, for instance, cow pats or other feces. And we know that cow and horse manure is particularly high in probiotics. It's high in B vitamins. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So if they feel that they're lacking in that, those can be particularly attractive. Um, should we be stopping our dogs eating grass? Um, excessively, yes. I mean, there are some grasses that actually can cause some damage if they're taken in, in bulk. And there are some blockages that can occur yep. um, if it gets uh, to excess um, just because they can't digest it. Uh, so it is something to look at. But actually, I think it's worth investigating why they might be eating grass. You know, if they are purging um you know why are they purging uh, have they got you know have you done a fecal egg count have you checked if they've got some gastrointestinal irritation are you hearing a lot of gut noise you know do they have any pancreatitis or other uh, issues ongoing um you know are there is their microbiome settled you know is there something that needs to be looked at there so it maybe is just a clue to look at things certainly don't panic you know, it really is something you do not need to panic about if they're eating a bit of grass now and again. Awesome. Great answer. Thank you, Brendan. Uh, I love that as well. I look at all symptoms and behaviours as clues. And whilst all of them might be common, none of them are normal. And it's always worth investigating. Um, I guess another consideration is if these grasses that the dog's eating, for instance, if it's down at the local park and it's been sprayed with pesticides or it's got paint on it or anything, obviously you want to minimize the toxin load that your dog is uh, imbibing. Um, so if you're out and about in the wild and it's, it doesn't look like it's being sprayed, maybe let it roll. But if you happen to think that this is something like, you know, it's the new local municipality and to get sprayed and yeah if it's had glyphosate all over it um or Holy you know Lord. weed and feed it weed and feed from uh you know trying to make your lawn look really great um then it might be worth just considering that's not the best thing to let them freely eat okay well on the final note on this um 
is there any of these behaviors or any particular reasons that you would need to contact your vet about so if somebody was doing this their dog was doing it excessively are there any other pointers where you should go hmm you know uh really i should get on the phone to brendan okay well i think the the main ones would be if you see abdominal discomfort so you see them often we call it a praying position where they will stretch their front legs out not just play bowing but actually stretch their front legs out put their heads down and arch you know invertly arch their backs um you know that can be a sign of colic um <clears throat> if you're seeing motions which are loose um and you're seeing not just vomiting and, and of the grass but actually vomiting foods etc then please yes those are considerations to actually go and get your vet to check out you know do a worm egg count make sure they've not got a worm burden um maybe do some bloods just to make sure their organs are functioning fine um maybe have a look at you know a palpation of the gut to make sure there's no lumps or bumps okay. uh, that there's no other um issues or blockages awesome okay well um I think for those of you who want to know more and you're new to raw feeding, please come and check out our ultimate nutrition guide, which is available for free on our website. Do come and join our Facebook group. We're about to hit 20,000 and we're really excited to welcome new members, share and care. It's the most welcoming group on Facebook. And for those of you who have been hanging around in the margins, excited to try raw feeding, but not quite sure, uh, Bella and Duke have a 50% introduction offer on at present. So feel free to click on the coupon below. And um, if you've enjoyed this and you want to learn more, please share it, please rate it, and please ask a question. We're really happy to address all those questions out there and bust some myths. On that note, looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, Brendan. Brilliant. Take care.